Okay. So hi again. If everyone wasn't in before, again, my name is Abby. Um, Grace is in here and she's going to be letting me know when any questions come in through the chat. So if you have any throughout the process, please write them in there and she'll give them to me right away. Um, I'm really excited to do this with you guys and we're going to go ahead and get started. So you can go ahead and switch to overview. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to paint some spring tulips um, and we're going to make some pretty simple cards that you can use on Mother's Day or for birthdays. Um, and we're going to make a couple of these. So I'm going to show you guys how you can make multiple cards at one time just using your watercolor paper. Um, and we're going to do a red one, a purple one, and then I'm also going to show you how to do a yellow one. Um, there is a reference image that Grace put in the chat if you want to grab that. That would just be for help um, with the drawing process, but I'm going to show you guys how I draw these. So you can either follow me or you can download that image of a few tulips and it'll help you get the shapes. And Grace, is that is that in the is that link in yep, there? It is in the chat. The chat I just put it in there and it's the tulip reference. Okay. So before I start showing you guys how I do this, I'm gonna um I'm going to show you the products really fast. I'm assuming that um, you guys have these. So they're both Derwent products. Um, this one is a metallic set. We're going to use that to add some shine at the end. And then this is the uh, travel set palette number one. And then both of these come with a water brush. So this is the brush that it comes with. Um, I'm also using a push brush today, which is also a Derwent product. And then if you don't have either one of these, maybe you're just using your watercolors and you don't even have the paint palette sets, that's fine too. Um, if you have watercolors and watercolor paper and any type of brush at home right now, you, you'll be able to do these tulips. So my paper that I'm using is, I'm using this Arches paper. And I'm showing you this so that um, you know uh, why I'm not taping my paper down. So I'm using Arches uh, paper and it comes in a block so you can see how it's all glued together on the edge. And when I'm doing any watercolor painting, um, the fact that it's all glued down in a block form means that it won't warp. If you're using watercolor paper that is not in a block form, then I would encourage you to go ahead and tape the edges of your paper down with masking tape. So I'm just going to show you how I would do that right now on one side. So here's my masking tape. And again, I'm not actually going to do this to my paper, but if you're at home, um, you would literally just do this along all sides of your paper and tape it down to your, to your surface. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And then in order to get our two, um, our two cards here. So I'm using an eight by 10 paper. Um, if you're not using that size, that's fine too. Whatever paper you have, turn it sideways and then divide it in half. So I'm gonna use my ruler. I'm gonna use my pencil. And I'm gonna mark just a really light line down the center. And again, this and is Abby, just to it, help me. Does it matter what pencil you're using when you're doing your outlining? No, not in this case. I'm I'm using an old mechanical pencil. Okay. I would just say keep your pencil lines as light as possible. There are a lot of really great pencils out there, like drawing pencils. You can get a much harder lead tip for drawing when you want to keep your pencil lines very light. I'm not doing that today. Um, but you can definitely use any pencil that you have lying around for this. Okay, so I've just divided my paper into two very, very lightly. And also for the sake of this, um, of this class, so I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do two separate greeting cards here. 
I also am going to show you on this one how to paint a yellow watercolor tulip by itself. So I'm not going to do the greening card style over here. As I'm painting my tulips, though, I want to show you guys the red, the purple, and the yellow. Um, so just for a reference, I'm going to be working on that over here as well. Okay, I'm going to assume that everyone's got their lines drawn. And next, we are just going to draw some tulips. Um, I think the most important thing to consider for this lesson is don't overwork anything. The tulips should be pretty simple. We're going to use a lot of water tonight and we're going to blend the colors. It should be really organic. Don't push it and um, it should be relaxing. So, so keep it simple. You can, again, you can look at the reference image, but I'm going to leave this right here. And you can also look at, at these two images and follow along while I do it. I'm not even, I'm not going to look at a reference image right now. So I'm just going to kind of make a couple petals. Abby, I know you showed us the intense paint pan sets. Could you also be using the blocks for a project like this? Or how would you incorporate those? Yeah, yeah, you can definitely do the blocks. I have used the blocks. Um, I tend to use them the same way that I would watercolors or the ink tents sets. So I don't necessarily use them in like a pastel form where you actually draw on the paper. I use my brush, I wet my brushes and then I'll use them um, in the same fashion that I would be using the, the paint sets. Uh, so yes, absolutely. And I just saw a message that you can't see the drawing. I apologize, I'm, I, I'm drawing so light, but I will make my drawing darker for the sake of this, but I want you guys to make your pencil lines really light because watercolor paintings, in my opinion, are always a little bit more beautiful when you don't have those hard pencil lines. I always try to erase mine at the end, um, but just for the sake of this class, I'm gonna go over mine. I feel like you can see that a little bit better. That would be and great. Again, I'm and just drawing. One of the other mm -hmm. questions is from time to time, would you mind lifting up the paper um, so that they could see yeah. the process a little bit? That'd be great. Yeah, so here, I'm gonna draw one of these. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm, I am quite literally, yeah. I'm looking at this image and I'm just making up my shapes. And then for my stem, I'm just gonna add a little line down there. Tulips, um, if you look at them, they have those really long pointed leaves. The leaves almost reach the actual bloom. Um, and then they're, they're tapered and then they have that point on the end. So again, look at this image as a reference right now and then just make up some leaves. Sometimes they have uh, like uneven edges. So you can I will finish this one and then I'll hold it up. Okay. So here's my first one. And then I'm going to I'm going to try to recreate this guy. The other thing is if you just look at the outline shape of this, the overall shape, which is almost like a, it's like an oval that's thinner at the top and then has some uneven edges at the top. If you, if you literally drew that shape and then follow along in the shading portion, you would create a beautiful tulip. I think someone just wrote wine glass shape. That's actually a really good reference.
Okay. I'm gonna let you guys draw for a couple more minutes. Um, I'm gonna draw my third one just to show you again, because I wanna show you guys the, some of the shading with the yellow. I'm not really gonna like finish this painting probably in the process. We're gonna focus on the red and the purple one, but just to, because I wanna show you guys some of the shading with the yellow, I'm gonna draw this guy out. Abby, when you're drawing the tulips, do you um, estimate the number of petals or how have you always gone to draw them? So when I started drawing these, when I was like prepping for this class, I literally, that re the reference image that was shared with you guys, I looked at a couple of those and drew what I saw. So this one, I know I haven't counted the number of tulips, this one, or the number of petals on a tulip. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that I can see. Um, but I, I tend to have like kind of three main ones. So like this is one, two, three, one, this is had like one, two, and then there's a, a third one peeking out there. This one has like a kind of a pointier one in the front. And then you have one here and one here. And then this kind of has the one, two, three. And then this one was like not quite open yet. It was, it was a little bit more closed. Um, so you couldn't even really see all the petals in there. Is this something you also could be doing with the intense pencils? I have not used the intense pencils. Um, Grace, tell me about those. What are, are those like watercolor pencils? Yes, so um, intense pencils. Yeah, I do have watercolor. Yeah, they're just like watercolor pencils. They're um, very versatile um, and there's a lot of intensity because they're water soluble. So the same colors that you would be getting from the paint pan sets, you can also get from the pencils, um, but you can control, um, you can control it a little bit more. Okay. Um, I would say yes. Um, so when I've used watercolor pencils, um, I'm always adding the color first and then I add the water later. If you're, if you have those at home right now, you could add the, uh, the color as we do this in pencil form, and then you can certainly add the water to it. I, I think you're definitely still gonna make some beautiful tulips. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with the red one. And there's really only th four more steps to this. So our first step is we're gonna add a bat base layer to each one of our tulips. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my water brush. And I'm gonna do the wet on wet technique for this part. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in one of my petals at a time. So you guys aren't gonna be able to see this until I add color. But once I add the color, you'll see where the water is. If you're not familiar with the wet on wet technique, it's a very popular technique in watercolor. It's my favorite one. And it's where you wet the paper first and then you add the pigment and you get some really beautiful organic shapes because the pigment, pigment follows the water rather than your hand moving the brush. Okay, so I've got this first petal very wet and then I'm gonna grab some red. I'm not sure if you guys can see which colors I'm grabbing. Oh, someone was sharing petal information in the chat. Okay, so here I go. Did you guys see that bleed out? And then I'm just gonna kind of move it around a little bit. But again, the goal of this is to keep the, keep your shapes really organic, very, very natural because flowers are really natural. Um, so I'm gonna like, I'm gonna put some, a, a little bit darker color at the bottom and I'm going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to move on to my next petal. And if you can, when you're adding, when you're adding the water to your next petal, try, you guys can see I have a little bit of color in there. That's okay. 
Um, try to keep like a very thin dry line between the two petals so that you have a little bit of separation. You can see it, um, if you, I, I hope that this focuses. You can see it right here. Like I have a white line going right along that petal edge and that's because I let that part, I left it dry, okay? So when you're adding your water on your second petal, just add, leave a little bit of separation there and then get some red, add it to your bottom. Abby, what are some tips for the watercolor to not leak out the edges of the paper? Um, so the, so the water is only going to go where you want it to go. It's only going to go, uh, where, where you, you put it. Um, I think the most challenging thing with watercolor is learning how to control the water. Once you figure that out, then you can do so many things with it. Um, but I would say, just try to be really good about controlling. That's actually why I kind of like these water brushes a lot because they have such a small tip and you can squeeze the water brush and the water will come out exactly where you want it to go. So as long as you can keep, if you, if you can control that water, it's not gonna go, the, the color is not gonna go anywhere outside of it. Sorry, I hope that was a good answer to the question. And what is special about, um, it looks like you're using the brush that came with the kit. Are there other paintbrushes that you could be using? Um, or what yeah. would you like? So actually when I go to the, yep, when I go over to the purple one, um, I'll use a different brush. I'm gonna show you guys how to use like a, just a regular watercolor brush that you might have at home. In that case, um, you're just gonna need a cup of water rather than having the water in your water brush. And again, I'll show you guys that in just a second. So again, try to keep all your little petals separate. But your colors are gonna dry beautiful. Um, if you, beautiful and very organic, if you just, if you just like add a little bit of pigment and then let it go. And then just see how it dries. And it might not be exactly perfect. It might not be exactly how you wanted it to be, but you know what? That's okay. Okay, so there's my red. I kind of want to add a little bit down here, just like that. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to move on to my purple one. And so what we're going to do, we're going to do, um, we're gonna do these steps for each tulip at the same time. And the reason for doing that is because you want your, your red base layer to dry a bit before we add the next layer. You don't want it to be completely dry, but you want it to dry a little bit. So we're gonna start our purple base layer and then I'm gonna show you guys the yellow base layer. And again, we're doing that in that way so that we can let those dry. Okay, so for this one, I am gonna use, you know what, I'm gonna use this flat brush for my, for my uh, base color. So I have my cup of water here. I'm just gonna get my brush really wet. And then again, you guys will see where I'm putting this water once I add the pigment. So in this case, I'm gonna use this purple right here. It's actually, it's called dark plum. Also the thing that's cool about um, the Inktense paints, if you're using them, is that they do dry and they're permanent once they dry. So with traditional watercolors, once they're dry, they, they're permanent in the sense that you can't erase them from your paper. Watercolor becomes part of the paper. Um, but if you're using, but, but sometimes you can get them to blend a little bit once they're dry. The ink tents 
paints will dry and they will be permanent. So you can add layers on top of them and you won't get um, like a, a, a muddying of your artwork. Do you want to talk us through a little bit how you do or how, why you decide to do the outside and then work in? Um, in what? Oh, you mean, do, do they mean like in the shape? Like For the why shape, I started yeah. The, yeah, I do that. I, I, that's a good question. I think I do that because I really want to control my, where my water is going. And if I make almost an outline with, with the edge of my brush. So like in this case, I'm turning this very wide brush onto its side like this, and I'm just using the little corner of it. And I can almost draw like a line with the water and then I can fill in the center and it's just going to go out to that water line. Does that make sense? Yep. I don't know that if that does. makes sense. Or... Okay. <laughs> That's a good question though. I've actually never really thought about the fact that I do that. I think this purple is beautiful. And I do want to say too, like tonight we're going to do these pretty fast and we're doing them also at a pretty small scale, but tulips and painting in this way with watercolor on a larger scale can be really fun. So I would recommend doing that if you ever have the time. Anything else in there, Grace, while I'm filling in my purple? Not at the moment. Does anybody have any other questions for Abby? Or in general, how are you guys doing? A lot are finding that it's really helpful to be watching it first and then going through it and looking at the recording um, and kind of going through your steps. But okay. they're very thankful okay. for your I explanation and instruction. So lots of positive feedback. I could see that. It, yeah. Um, one of the questions is about like trying to get definition. Um, on the tulips, does that mean that you're using too much color if it's more diluted or too much water if it's more diluted? Uh, yeah, so that's a good question. It's also something that's kind of difficult to, mm, I just always think it's kind of difficult to um, discuss it virtually because it's something you got to feel. That probably sounds so cheesy, but, but watercolor is a very like reactionary medium, I think. And when you add dimension, you almost want to add it at the right time when the water, when your, when your paper isn't too dry, but again, it's not too wet. And because you want it to blend um, and you want to get these like really beautiful organic hard edges. So hopefully maybe this will help answer that a little bit. If you can see my, my purple tulip right here, I want to define my edges a little bit more. It's still very wet. So if I would add a whole bunch of pigment to this right now, it would just bleed out everywhere. However, if I get a little bit of pigment right onto the corner of my brush, so I'm not doing like the whole flat edge of the brush, but if I just get a little bit onto the corner of my brush and then I kind of just drag my brush along the edge there, because my paper is still wet enough that it's gonna bleed out a little bit, but it's not too wet that I have an entire, like a huge blob of water there, um, it's gonna start helping me add definition. Now I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna add some more definition and some really darks um, dark, dark shading here in a minute when we do our next layer. Um, but I think that the, the best way to explain how to add definition is, is learning how to control your pigment and the water and learning when to add it. Because the other thing with watercolor that's really important is you want to leave some whites, like the white of your paper, you want that to remain white for your highlights. And you also want to leave dimension in your washes. So this is a wash right here. 
And you can see that I have a super light area and then I've got some super dark areas. And you do that by adding pigment in different places and then again, stepping away and letting it dry as is. Because if you start, if you start controlling it too much, um, then you kind of end up just filling in the whole shape and you get a flat shape. Okay, I'm gonna set this up here and I'm just gonna do the yellow one really fast and then we're gonna move on to the next step. You guys probably can't even see the color. Um, I'm gonna use my, or sorry, the pencil lines. I'm gonna use my flat brush again. We're having a lot and of questions. Yep, we're having a lot of questions mm -hmm. about brushes um, and when you decide to use a certain one. Okay, good question. I think the, the best answer, well, first it comes to the size of paper that I'm working with, like the size of the composition. If I'm working with a huge composition, actually, oh, you guys probably can't see this right now. I sometimes use a brush that's that big. Um, and it also depends on what you're doing. So if you're adding a background wash, then you want to use like a bigger, a bigger brush. If you're adding detail, you want to use a fine point. Um, the, for this particular exercise, again, if you just had your water brush, you would be able to do this because you can control the amount of water that's coming out of it. Even though it's a very small tip, you have water that can actually flow out of it and fill in bigger spaces. There is like a, like in the traditional watercolor world, a size nine and a size six round brush are both very good brushes to have in addition to having like a good flat one, like what I'm using right now. And then a really fine point. This is another one that Derwent makes. So it's like longer, it's got a really fine point on it. So was that, was that helpful? Very helpful. Um, one of the questions is about blending the color um, and how you actually add more colors. So I think you said you were gonna go into well, that. Yeah, so that's actually, but right now while I'm doing this yellow one, which by the way, you guys, I'm going to do this one really fast because I want to make sure that we have time to finish our at, red and our purple one. We're at about 30 minutes in. Um, and what size is your flat water brush right now? Oh my gosh. I don't know, Grace. Do you know? <laughs> it's a Derwent brush. I feel so silly. I should know that, but it's, let me double check. It's not very big here. I can measure it for you. It's probably like a half inch when it's dry. It's a little, it's wet right now. So it's kind of come into a point a little bit, but it's like a half inch wide. Awesome. Um, so actually good question though on blending color. I'm going to show you guys how you can blend color um, right now. So, so I just laid down a yellow wash while it's still really wet. I'm going to put a little orange in here because some of the tulips that I see are like red and yellow and they have a little bit of orange in them. So I just got some orange there and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add it to the face. And do you normally have to wait until it dries or do you blend while it's wet? Yeah, so that depends on what you're trying to do. Um, I definitely in all my watercolor paintings, a lot of them are done when it is, when the, when the paper is still wet. However, I always go back and add in really fine, really fine and really dark details once everything is dry. So it just depends on, on what you are, what you're trying to accomplish at that, that stage. Can you guys see that? Like the red and the yellow, or I'm sorry, the orange and the yellow blending. I'll hold it up a little bit. Okay, so now we've got all of our basis here. My red one is still a little wet. It's not as wet as it was before, but it's definitely still a little wet. So we're going to add the shading to each one. I'm going to use the metallic paints for some of this, number one, just because I like them, and number two, because they bring in some different shades to play with. So I'm going to use my water brush again, really just because I like the tip in this case. If you guys have like a finer tip brush, that's what you would want to use. Um, so I'm going to use my red metallic color. Also, I don't think like the, the video is not going to be able to get 
um, the beautiful metallic nature of these. But if you're using these at home, they really do have a beautiful shiny finish to them. And you just want to, I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. Just start adding a little bit of texture. Grace, can you hear my husband on a call right now? Sorry. Nope. You are good. Okay. It's right outside the door on another Zoom call. Um, we're having questions about the brushes again and I believe you have used both the flat brush as well as the pen brush on the tulips. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah, actually here, I'll use, a, I'll use a random round brush that I have for a minute so that you guys can see that. This is are, you nine. Adding, are you adding the red metallic only on the wet space or over white spaces too? So my mine is still all wet. Oh yeah, if you left anything white, leave that white. So I'm just adding it to the areas that I've already um, colored in. And really what I'm trying to do is just add some, some really darker shadowing underneath. You just wanna give it some dimension. So like this petal, and I'm making up my shading, right? You, you could go out and um, observe a tulip and get some accurate shading, but we're inside right now. I am anyway, so I'm not gonna do that at the moment. Plus you don't, you don't really need to for a simple card. Um, but I would encourage everyone to do that at some point, go do some observational painting. But yeah, what I'm trying to do right now is just work in some shading so that it gives my tulip a more dimensional appearance. So all of the, any, any petal that's behind another petal, I'm just adding a little bit of definition to it. And again, sorry that, so this is a number nine round brush. Okay. And do you wanna say the palettes that you're using again? Yeah, so I'm using the Intense Paint Pan Travel Set palette number one, and then the Metallic Watercolor Paint Pan Set. Okay, while the red one is still a little wet, I'm gonna add in and you guys don't have to follow my colors exactly, but I'm gonna try to add in like a really dark, dark um, right under the edge here. So I think I'm gonna use, I'm actually gonna use some of the dark plum. I'm just gonna add it right into the bottom here. At this point, my paper is still a little wet, but it's not wet enough that the color is bleeding out. Like in the beginning, when I added my, my red wash, you know, remember how it just like bled out everywhere? My paper is not that wet anymore. So I'm able to have a little bit more control. And also when I take my hand away, I am wiping my, you guys probably can't see that. I'm wiping some of the water off my brush again, to try and control that. So this is actually dry over here at this point. But you can see that um, like, I'm able to now follow the edge of it and it doesn't bleed out anywhere. Do you want to show then, um, the, your other finished tulip image just next to what we're drawing as another yeah. reference? There we go. So right now what I'm doing, and this is probably going to be a really important shading part, so I'm adding a really dark thin line right underneath that petal. And I'm gonna add a little bit more up here. I'm 
Okay, and now I feel like I'm fussing with it too much. So there we go, we're gonna leave it. This one over here, I don't know if you guys can see it. I actually have like a streak of orange in it. So you can play around with your, with your warm colors in this case. I mean, you could add like some yellow, a little bit of orange. I would encourage you to do like a whole other page of these tulips and see what colors you come up with. All right, so now I'm gonna go on to my purple. And my purple one is almost completely dry, which I don't love, that's okay. I'm gonna use my round brush again in this case. And I'm gonna do the same thing, except in this case, I'm gonna use the purple metallic. And I'm just gonna add it to the bottom here. If you guys haven't used the metallic paints yet, um, I really would encourage you to get them. They are more fun than I actually thought they would be. And they're, they're like, they're stunning. You can layer them and layer them and create very beautiful, just fun artwork. I also like, I have a niece and I wanna paint using them with her because she loves everything sparkly. Like they're, they're just fun and they're playful. I haven't done this yet, but apparently you can paint on black watercolor paper using them and create some really stunning images. Okay, so now to show you guys how I would add like little detail with a finer tip, I'm gonna grab my fine tip water brush again. And I'm going to grab some more dark plum over here. And if you can see like, so this petal kind of wraps up and then there's a really dark shade under there. So I'm going to add that. I love that I can do these videos with you guys, but I always feel like they're so silent because I can't hear any of you. If um, you wanted to display this, how would you mount or frame the paper um, knowing that it's watercolor paper? Sorry, how would I what? How would you frame it? Is there any way that you would frame it differently because it's on watercolor paper? Um, no, not really. So, um, well, watercolor in general, you should, you should protect it with glass. It can fade over time. So that's, I mean, that's something you would want to think about. You, you can't, I actually get a lot of people who ask me if I can watercolor something for them on canvas. You can't, it's got to be watercolor paper. There might be watercolor paper canvases that exist, um, but I haven't used them. So, um, so I guess, no, not really. I, I would just recommend like covering it. In, if it's something that you wanna keep over a long period of time and you wanna hang it, cover it with glass and that'll just help protect the, uh, and keep it out of like direct sunlight and that'll help to protect the, um, the color intensity of it. So I'm just gonna set these up here really fast. And while you guys are still working on your red or purple one, or maybe you've also, maybe you're also doing the yellow one, I'm gonna add some shading to this really fast. 
And when you add shading, are you squeezing any new water or are you just using um, the water brush? Um, so when I'm using the water brush, I'm using the water that's in my water brush. Um, and actually I need to refill mine. So I'm going to do so right now with my water bottle. One minute. But when I use any of the other brushes, um, I'm using this cup of water. And for this, for the sake of this class, I'm not like getting new water. Sometimes when I'm working, um, if I have a lot of pigment that I'm working with, like in this case, we're not working with a whole bunch of pigment. If I am using a whole lot of pigment, I will keep one cup of water that's for my warm colors and one that's for my cool colors. Awesome. And does it matter um, the watercolor paper that you're using or does it just need to be watercolor paper? Um, that's a really good question with a very long answer. Well, I have a long answer because I love watercolor and, um, okay. Short answer is you can do watercolor on any watercolor paper. Um, when I first started painting, I was using student grade watercolor paper which to be honest is a lot more affordable, but it does break down a little faster. And when I started using professional grade watercolor paper, which is what I'm using right now, it, it helps you realize your potential with watercolor. Um, by the way, I'm gonna add a little bit of red to this one, to my yellow one. Um, so you can absolutely do this on any watercolor paper that you have. But if you, if you really, really enjoy the watercolor process, I would recommend splurging on some watercolor paper if you can and just try out some professional grade stuff because it, the, the, the color will show up a little bit brighter. Um, you'll be able to add more water and more layers of pigment without your paper breaking down. Like sometimes I'll use a 600 pound paper and you can add so many layers of pigment to that. And, and your paper doesn't break down. So, um, so yeah, I hope that, did that answer it, Grace? Yes, it did. Um, and so right now, would you say you're doing wet on wet painting or wet on dry? Um, right now, since this was still wet, I would say it's wet on wet. Um, I would say for the purple one, which ended up being dry for me, it's sorry, I live in the city and very loud car just went by. Um, then that was wet on dry. And when do you, when do you choose to do which one? Are there different scenarios of wet on wet versus wet so on dry? That's really up to the artist. Um, by the way, sorry guys, I'm running out of time here. So I'm going to try to show you guys how to do these stems. I'm going to leave my yellow one. Um, I just wanted to show you guys how to, how to do that also really fast if you wanted to. And I did this on my other tulip add a little gold metallic to it and you'll come out with like a really pretty tulip. But there you go. I just wanted to show you how you can mix red and orange in with your yellow to give it some shading. Um, I'm sorry, Grace, what was that question again? Um, when you decide, I think you answered it. You said it was the artist's choice of when to be drying wet on wet or oh, wet on dry. Yeah, yeah, I prefer, I love that conversation. I prefer to use the wet on wet technique, like all the time, because it gives you such beautiful organic edges. But if you're like a very precise illustrator, very precise artist, um, then the, I mean, the wet on dry technique, you have a lot of control over it, over where the pigment goes. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do these stems really fast. I'm gonna use my round brush. And the stems are actually pretty easy, so it's okay. Um, I'm going to start out by just adding a little bit of water. So again, wet on wet technique. Add some water to my stem right underneath there. And then I'm going to grab some of this kiwi. We're getting some questions about the push pen water brush about if the pigment goes up into the chamber. Um, it does not. And Abby can talk through a little bit of like how hard you push or when you push the water. Um, do you yeah. want to kind of go into that a little bit? Yeah, gosh, again, that's, that's like, 
<laughs> I love these questions. They're so good. No, but they're also things where I like, I wish I could be with people to show them. Um, real fast though, just so that you guys know what I'm doing here on my leaves, I am using all these greens. So I'm using kiwi and I'm going to use the lime gold for my base. And then for the darks, we're going to use the green metallic and then the teal green. Um, I'm sorry, Grace. Now I forget that question again. Oh, the water brush. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want to push, <laughs> you don't want to push too hard because then all your water will come out. You also don't want to let go of, if you have it pushed in, you don't want to let go of that. Like, so if I had this pushed in right now and then I put it into my color, I wouldn't want to let go. Cause then that, that it actually has kind of like the, the pigment has just like kind of muddied the water that was in the water brush, but I, I've never had that problem since. Um, so you, I would say by using it, you'll learn. It's, um, it's a feeling that Derwent also has the push brushes, which are these, and you have a little bit more control. I don't know if you guys can see this. There's like an actual push button here. And you have a little bit more control over this one than you do on this one. I actually think that the water brushes are easier to use than traditional brushes, because once you figure out how to control the flow of the water that comes out of them, I think that you just have a little bit more freedom with, with your painting and with your brush, because you don't have to keep stopping to wet your brush again. Yep. And the push button water what brushes think, that Abby just spoke about do come in four different sizes. Um, so there's a lot of versatility with that. Yeah, I love the whole set of them. I didn't use them in this because I, I didn't want to like make it a requirement. I use them all the time. There's a flat one, a fine point, um, a like medium size, and then like a larger round. Um, and I use all of them. The fine tip one is probably my favorite. We're having a few people ask, um, where do artists initial their paintings? Oh, wherever you want. Wherever you want. That's your thing. That's your initial. I always do mine like in the right left or the, the lower right hand corner or I'll try to hide it. <laughs> okay, so I just finished the base layer for my first tulip stem and I'm going to come over to my purple one and do it really fast. And while you're talking Again. or while you're working on this one, would you mind um, explaining the difference between the Inktense pans and regular watercolor? Yes, I can definitely do that. Um, so traditional watercolors are, I started explaining like one of the major differences before which is that these Inktense paints are going to dry and then they'll be permanent, which when you're learning to do watercolor can be very helpful because one of the most frustrating things with traditional watercolor is that as you add more layers, um, you, your painting can start to get a little muddy. Um, so with these, that won't be a problem if you allow them to dry. The other thing is these paints, I feel like it, I feel like this video isn't even doing it, the, the brightness of them justice right now. They are very, very vibrant. I use them in a lot of illustration work. They're very playful. I use them in a lot of like, like if I'm, I don't know, if I'm trying to paint some, some really pretty flowers or some beautiful sunsets, just anything where I want to, I, I want to get a really bright, vibrant um, finish. I will use these. And honestly, they're some of the most vibrant paints that I use. So I would say those are the two biggest differences. Not that traditional watercolors aren't bright. I have some very, very bright traditional watercolors, but the fact that you get like this single palette and that like the yellow and the orange specifically are very vibrant. I use them for like highlighting specific parts of my illustration sometimes. Um, you just can't really get that in, in other paints. Okay, so now I'm going to start adding a little bit of shading to my stems. And I'm going to do that just by using some teal. And 
just, we're gonna keep this pretty simple because I want this to dry so I can take my paper out and show you guys a finished little card. You always have to put water on paper first before you apply the paint to the paper. No, no, you don't. I mean, you could literally decide to do an entire painting that is the wet on dry technique, meaning like a wet brush. So you have water and pigment in your brush and your paper is dry. You can absolutely choose to do that. The, uh, I tend to work this way because it was the way I was taught. And I, I don't know, I, it's, it, the wet on wet technique is what I love about watercolor because I, I like that I can't control exactly where the pigment goes. I think that that's what makes watercolor a special medium to work with. Do you do a lot of mixing a, um, of the colors within this palette? I do. And I, I, I um, yeah, like right now I'm doing it, especially with the different greens. I don't know how much you guys can see it. And I am kind of rushing it so that we fit all this in. But like, so right now I, I just mixed, I put down some wet teal and now I'm putting down some wet green metallic on top of it. The other thing is um, look up like, I tend to not use black in a lot of my paintings unless it's absolutely necessary. So I use a lot of complementary colors in order to achieve shading. So if I have like, I don't know if I'm if I'm painting something that's green, I'll use red to add some really dark shadowing. And in that case, yeah, I am mixing colors. Okay. I also have this really pretty racing green, which is super dark. I'm just gonna add it right underneath my stem to finish it off. So I'm gonna call my red one done. I'm gonna go over here and quickly finish this guy. Oh, the other thing is, and I would be doing this right now, but I didn't wanna bombard you with a terrible noise. Um, you can use a hair dryer when you're painting at home. And every time you finish a layer, if you want it to be dry, you can, I just blow dry your paper and then add the next layer and that'll speed up the process because again, sometimes you do want your layers to dry before you add another, another layer to it. Do you ever mix the colors on your palette or do you always mix them on the paper? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I'm laughing because I have a watercolor palette over here and it's a mess. So the answer is yes. This is my watercolor palette. So if I'm using like other traditional watercolors, I will mix them together. When I'm using these paint pan sets, you don't need a palette because it's already in there for you. Um, and in that case, I just mix them on the paper. So I'll put down a big blob of water and then I'll put down my, my first color and then I'll just add some of my other color and mix it right there on the paper. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of dark to this. And I'm gonna call that done. If I were, if I had more time right now, I'd probably fuss with this a little bit more, but I'm not going to, so we can take these out. All right, final step. We want these, right? I honestly do use little cards like this for everything. I have a birthday that I'm gonna use one of these for. Um, so if you use watercolor paper in general, it's pretty thick. Um, if you use any of it, you should be able to do like a nice cardstock um, note card. My, the paper that I'm using is a 300 pound paper. So it's like, it's extra hardy and it, and it does make for a good greeting card. So if you are making these for greeting cards and you want to do a bunch of them at one time, I would recommend getting some, some professional grade thicker paper. Um, if you're using the arches paper and it's in a block form, by the way, let yours dry completely. I'm just going to do this to show you guys what to do. So if you look at the top here, I'm going to use, this is a cheese knife and I use it for this all the time. You just insert your knife or your palette knife. You could use a palette knife for this and then you're going to literally kind of cut that away. And if I would have let this dry completely, then I would have ended up with a completely flat 
note card. Okay, that's the other great part. So definitely let yours dry. Um, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna take my ruler and you just need to like score along that edge just a little bit. So I'm gonna line up my ruler. You can use anything for this. Like I'm gonna use the tip of my pencil. I'm not using the pencil lead. So I put the pencil lead down into the pencil and then I'm just gonna like push really hard to score along that. And we're gonna hand tear it. Oh, these are still so wet. Fold along there. I really like hand torn edges. So you could totally just cut these in half if you wanted to, but I like doing it this way. You could also use an X-Acto blade if you want to. I'm literally just folding it back and forth right now. While you're doing this, do you wanna share with us um, if anybody wanted to see more of your artwork or share what they've made with you? Um, what platforms? Yeah, can so I definitely wanna see what you guys did. Um, I am mostly on Instagram. That's the best way to find me. Um, and it's abbynurrywatercolor.com or that's my website. It, Instagram is at abbynurrywatercolor. Um, and that's A-B-B-Y and then N-U-R-R-E watercolor. Um, so there we go. Look at all these cute little note cards. Yay. I want to see what you guys did. I would love it if you share your images with me. At the end of these videos, I actually like to ask if I can have everybody hold up your artwork, but I can't see all of you guys. Grace, are they able to do that? If you are on video, I think you could see it. Um, so thanks oh, again I'm to so Abby and to Michael. I can see you, right? I can yes, see some of them on if you go up to the right top corner where it says view, just go to gallery view and you'll be able yeah. to see it. These Perfect. are beautiful. So These are so beautiful. Well, thank you so much. I've like taken up your entire hour um, and it is almost nine o'clock. I'm sorry that I had to rush it a little bit at the end, but thank you. And I hope you guys use these for Mother's Day or for birthdays or any holidays. Um, enjoy the spring and enjoy all the beautiful blooms. And it was so great painting with you guys tonight. Have a wonderful night. Bye everyone.